All right, guys, what's up? And welcome back to Tactical Ashigarami TV. I am super excited for this one. I know I'm late on this train, but you know what they say, guys? Uh, sometimes later is better than never. I got the suit on today, even though you can't see me in the background, because this is definitely serious and it calls for a suit. I don't have a coin. Anyways, uh, moving forward. For the YouTube reviewers and for whom it may concern, okay, everything in this video is an imitation. It is not real. Don't come after me. Everything that you see in this video, once again, is not real. It is fake. It is a toy. There is nothing dangerous in this video. And I know, you know, almost all the time, I have to say this a lot, but... You know, it is an important disclaimer because a lot of the times, as you've seen, a lot of videos get demonetized. I've, I've, I've definitely had issues with that in the past. So um, it's very important to kind of just to mention that and to clean that up. So once again, guys, make sure you check out Airsoft Tiger 101 HK. And that's at Tiger 111 HK, you know. Um, so that's there. Make sure you guys check them out. For all these amazing deals, these are these guys are an airsoft supplier, okay? Not real steel, so um, just go ahead and check that out. And that is pretty much the source of this amazing object that we have right here. This is from Tiger One on HK, and as you probably know by now, there is something very special in this package. And I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to go on record and say this. Um, I believe that this video will be one of my most watched videos. I hope. I believe it will be. That's up to you guys. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, all that good jazz. Make sure you watch until the end. Um, it, I'm very excited for this. Super, super excited for this. And I've been dying to receive this. And it is finally here. OMG. So let's get right into it. Okay, we got... Once again, all of our declaration documentation that these guys are always kind enough to get down here, okay? We hereby certify that this package contains airsoft toys which are unharmful, okay? This is very important. And the reason why I'm showing this is because I want it to be known that there is nothing harmful in this box. So once again, YouTube, here it is. Here is my proof. As you've seen in my last few unboxings, take this into consideration, okay? Everything here pretty much complies with HK's export policy and Japan's regulations for Airsoft. So I'm in the clear. It's very important to have this documentation for customs. They provide this for you when you ship through them or when you order through them. And... Here is your muzzle velocity test with the information. And here we have the Army licensed TTI John Wick 4 Pit Viper in CNC. This is crazy. CNC aluminum with steel parts. This is insane. And here we did the jewel test. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, blah, blah, blah. Here it is. As you can see, everything is under that limit. All right, let's open her up. Let's get into the action. Okay. I know you guys are excited. I'm excited. I have been dying to open this package. Okay. And as you guys know, when these guys send stuff out, as you've seen on this channel, it comes well packaged. Very well packaged. In layers of bubble wrap boom All right we're probably gonna see the army armament box in there as well let's get this out the way get rid of that plastic and let's cut into some bubble wrap okay super super excited guys i know i'm late on this train i know a lot of people now they have videos up that I've done very well since the movie came out. Personally, 
I've seen a lot of highlights from the movie. I haven't watched the entire movie myself, but you know, it is really big. John Wick is very big in the overall industry when it comes to uh you know self-defense hint hint right john wick 4 is an amazing uh franchise when i posted the sand viper video last year it did very well and it got a lot of views a lot of people gravitate towards Taran tactical innovations and their products so having that Taran license on anything that you put out is very big and that licensing does a lot in terms of pricing and things like that. So getting something like this at the cost that I got it for is extremely rare. So this is this is insane. Oh, we're seeing it. I'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel. And... I guess another reason why they put so much of this wrapping on here is to kind of deter anyone from kind of opening it too, probably. Because it is a bit of a pain to do, I can imagine. Okay, right? But once again, the box is very well protected. Because it does take a far journey to get to its destination. And here it is. The R614. Woo! Taran Tactical Innovations Pit Viper. Oh, man. What a glossy box. Classic style army armament box with basically nothing on it except for the trades. There you go. Taran Tactical Innovations, Jag Precision. Shout out to Jag Precision as well as Army Armament, obviously, as well. Um, they are a big part of what you're going to see. Okay, and here you have some more Taran licensing on the box. Not that many trades and warnings on the box, like the EMG. So, there it is. You got it right there. Manufactured by Army Armament. This is very important. Okay, so Jag Precision is a licensor. Just to kind of clarify, Army Armament is the manufacturer. Okay. And this thing is supposed to be incredible. Oh, it feels sturdy. There we have our owner's manual, okay? Our operator's manual, as per what we've seen with the Sand Viper. We'll take a quick look at this and see what we have. Our table of contents. We have our disclaimer, safety guidelines, Operating safety, operation, adverse conditions, and maintenance. Diagram, troubleshooting, warranty. Okay. Let's take a quick look at this. Disclaimer is, it is the sole responsibility of the user to ascertain that this product complies with all federal, state, and local laws in regards to the possession, transportation, sale, and use of this product. This product is intended for adult users only. Army Armament and its affiliated entities are not liable for any bodily injury or death that occurs through the use of this product. Ooh, okay. I guess that is very important, guys. So I remember, you know, I, I did a, an unboxing a while back and um, one of the people in the comment section that commented, they mentioned something about the importance of actually looking at things like this on the channel because from what I understand, there have been instances where, uh, yeah, things like this, things happen. Basically, products, Airsoft products get mishandled and it does lead to some unfortunate incidents. Um, I am a proponent of safety, you know, and safety is important, you know, throughout the industry in many regards. So, yes, I guess in that sense looking at things like this and putting a lot of what you see here into practice is very important okay tyrant tactical innovations combat master six millimeter green gas gas blowback pistol so what you what you're basically seeing here once again you're seeing a lot of green gas and one three four labels for a lot of these things especially for this product 
I haven't seen any any hints or any type of indications that show that this is compatible with CO2. So I just want to kind of put that out there so you guys pretty much understand that this is not that type of product. And you notice that I'm taking my time to kind of go through this a little bit longer than I usually do with most unboxings, even before I even touch the actual product itself so you guys can get an understanding of what's going on here. Use of this manual prior to handling these products, the user the users must read this manual in its entirety. Okay. All right, so we'll set an example. This manual encompasses important safety topics, instructions, principles, and operations, including but not limited to mandatory safety equipment, replica firearm safety procedures, transportation, operation, maintenance, function, etc. Right? Failure to follow safety guidelines may result in serious injury. Is not the truth. Eye protection. Always wear a full seal ANSI Z87-1. Okay. Eye rated eye protection when in the vicinity of operating, servicing, transport, transporting, and or shooting this airsoft product. Always point the muzzle in a safe direction and treat the gun as loaded. That is very true. I've seen a lot of videos, especially online, where you see a lot of airsofters. Even people who are outside of the airsoft realm, and they do this a lot, where they will point the muzzle in very unsafe directions. So you should always be aware of where you're pointing your muzzle, right? I know this isn't very John Wiss, John Wick esque, right? This is not the kind of conversation that a lot of people want to have, but this is the conversation that we need to have, right? Because what's important is every single time, whenever we have situations where something goes wrong in the industry, everybody gets a finger pointed at them. So this is something that should definitely be taken into consideration. Okay, finger off the trigger. Safety on. Always treat the airsoft gun as if it's loaded. Never assume the airsoft gun chamber magazines and or gas reservoir is empty and unloaded based off of memory or the word of others. Always empty the chamber, unload the magazine and degas the magazines immediately after use. Now, this is interesting because I know a lot of airsofters, including myself, that when we use gas magazines, usually, especially... For 134A, I don't degas my mags because I don't want the seals to dry out. So I normally leave some gas in the reservoir. So the degassing thing is something that's very interesting. Emptying the actual ammo itself with the six millimeter BBs, yeah, that is definitely something that's kind of you know understandable, you know, chamber emptying and things like that. But degassing is very interesting. So that's Kind of the first time I'm actually seeing this in a booklet. It might be in the other ones too. Always keep your fingers off the trigger and outside the trigger guard with the safety on until you are ready to fire. That is very good. It's good to practice safety. Know your target and its surroundings. Always be aware of the direction that the airsoft gun is pointing. Never point or aim the airsoft gun in a direction you do not intend to shoot. When not firing, always keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Safety distance. The effective shooting range of this airsoft gun is approximately 175 feet. That is significant. BBs fired from this product may travel further than intended. Make certain that there is adequate backstop before firing. Carrying on and off the field. Only use this airsoft product in a legally established and sanctioned airsoft fields. Use in any other locale may be mistaken as brandishing. Now, this is very important, especially for consumers in the States, because we're, we're seeing time and time again, um, a lot of people getting in trouble with airsoft products. And this is a little bit off topic and kind of taken away from the, uh, the you say, the, uh, the glitz and the glamour of the review. 
But the safety aspect is something that should be 100% observed and practiced at all times. So I am an advocate for this. Beware of barrel obstructions. Ensure that the barrel is free and clear of obstructions before firing. Failure to do so will cause jams or stoppages, which may damage internal mechanisms and void the warranty. Mm. Do they have a warranty in this though? We'll, we'll double check for that. That's interesting. Ensure that the aforementioned safety equipment is worn at all times and the safety is engaged whenever checking for obstructions. Storage and transport. Ensure that the airsoft gun, magazines, and gas reservoirs are, are unloaded and empty. Turn the safety on. Insert a plug into the barrel and place the airsoft gun inside of a secure container or bag. It is the sole responsibility of the of user to ascertain that this product complies with all federal, state, and local laws with regards to transportation and ownership of this product. Only use high quality BBs and gas. Only use high quality BBs and gas with this product. Failure to do so will void the warranty causing erratic shot performance and damage to internal mechanisms. Blaze orange tip and modifications. Any alteration to the blaze orange tip permanently affixed to the end of the barrel or modification to this gun will void the warranty and may violate federal, state, or local laws. Cleaning and maintenance. Perform the proper maintenance as outlined in this manual to ensure that the longevity of your arm armament product failure to do so will negatively impact service life and may lead to injury. Failure to follow safety. Yo, the, the amount of times I've seen injury in this <laughs> in this 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 book is insane. But it's it's important because like they they have to reiterate this, right? Because you just see and hear about all these unfortunate incidents and you wonder how and why these things happen. I I normally I wouldn't say that I don't read this a lot when I get it, but a lot of it, if you've been in airsoft for a long time, it's common sense. But, you know, sometimes common sense isn't common. So I guess them putting it in there is a way of them covering themselves so they don't have to worry about the legal ramifications of all these things that are happening. Which is interesting to me. Okay. Nomenclature and operating the safety, the pistol has two safeties, an automatic grip safety and manual ambidextrous thumb safety. Yeah, just like the standard high kappa. To disengage the manual safety, slide a lever located on either side of the hammer downwards, slide upwards to engage the safety, yes. The grip safety located at the rear of the pistol in line where the trigger is automatically disengaged when a proper shooting grip is applied. Loading BBs into the magazine. To load BBs into the magazine, slide and hold the follower in red. Um, this doesn't have a red follower. I don't think so. But okay. Towards the base of the magazine and hold it in place. Or maybe this is for the diagram itself. Okay. While holding the follower in place, angle the top of the magazine downwards while using your free hand to load BBs into the wide portion of the BB rack directly above the follower. Be sure to stack the BBs evenly in an alternating pattern. Uneven stacking may cause malfunctions and will diminish BB capacity. Only release the follower once the magazine is fully loaded. Okay. Filling and pouring the, the purging the magazine. To fill the magazine, first ensure that you are in a well-ventilated area away from any ignition sources. Hold the magazine and gas canister upside down and center the gas canister nozzle over the fill port located on the bottom of the magazine. Press the fill nozzle directly into the fill port, taking care not to angle the canister as it will cause gas to vent during the filling process. Press and hold for approximately 10 seconds or until full. To ensure maximum gas capacity, purging the magazine is recommended. Really? Purging? I don't know about that, but 
once again, you know, it's in the booklet. So to purge the magazine, press and hold the knocker valve located at the rear of the magazine prior to filling. Fill following the guidelines above, but immediately release the knocker valve as soon as the gas vents from the magazine. Always purge with the top of the magazine facing away from you. <laughs> it's important. Loading, firing, and firing the gun and emptying the chamber. Ensure that there is nothing downrange that you do not intend to shoot. Insert a gassed and loaded magazine. Disengage the safety and rack the slide all the way to the rear and release in one swift motion. The pistol is not ready to fire. Aim at your intended target and pull the trigger. To empty the chamber and magazine, aim the pistol in a safe direction with a gassed magazine and fire until the slide locks to the rear. To degas, simply follow the purging instructions without the filling steps. Okay. So, you see, I guess like this, this booklet to me is very beginner friendly. Not in a sense that it's like you, you sh everybody should take this into account, right? Because safety is important and things happen. Things happen. Like a lot of things can happen, even with, if you're practicing at home. So I guess these are just very important reminders that we need to take into consideration. Hop-up adjustment. To adjust the hop-up, removal of slide is necessary. First, ensure that the gun is safe and clear and the magazine is removed. Align the rear of the slide cache to the takedown notch on the left of the left, on the left of the slide as shown in the slide cache diagram and hold in this position. While continuing to hold the slide in position, push the visible portion of the slide catch pin on the right side of the pistol to remove the slide catch completely. The slide can now be removed from the gun. The hop-up adjustment dial is located on the bottom of the slide assembly. Turn the hop-up wheel counterclockwise to an increased hop, clockwise to decrease. Adjust the desired levels. To reassemble the pistol, replace the slide, making sure to push down any components that block the motion of the slide. Line up the takedown notch and reinsert the slide catch. Okay. Cleaning the barrel. It is recommended that the barrel be cleaned after each use with a cleaning rod and swab. First, ensure the magazine is removed and the gun is safe and clear. Insert a swab through the eyelet of a cleaning rod. Pull the swab backwards towards the main body of the rod and remove any excess that reaches the wide portion. Lightly dampen the swab with isopropyl alcohol. Well, that's interesting because... I was always told that you should not use alcohol in a, in a barrel. That's interesting. So maybe it, that might be a reference to the material itself. I know most brass ones that come with other products like Tokyo Mari, they tell you, I've heard that you should. But then again, that's interesting. And insert the cleaning rod swab first into the barrel upon encountering any resistance retract the rod and reinsert repeat as necessary until there is little to no dirt on the swab okay all right adverse conditions and maintenance rain follow humid conditions rain follow humid conditions may cause moisture to build up inside of the gun and can avoid the warranty immediately after use a drop use dry immediately after use dry all moisture and clean the barrel store in a dry location Mm, I heard about this for, for optics. It's interesting. Dusty or sandy conditions. Dust or sand will cause malfunctions and interfere with the function of the airsoft gun and may void the warranty. Be sure to avoid sandy or dusty environments and to always clean the gun and barrel immediately after use. Extreme cold. This product is designed to operate above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. 
in temperatures and environments below this, this operating temperature, the, the operating temperature, the gun may fire at a lower than advertised velocities or fail to fire. Move the gun to a warmer location. Extreme heat. Wow. Like this. Wow. This is amazing. This product is designed to operate below 90 degrees Fahrenheit in temperatures and environments above this operating temperature. The gun may fire at higher than advertised velocities or fail to fire. Cool off the gun and move to a shaded location. Underwater. Do not operate this gas blowback underwater. Doing so will void the warranty. So there's so much information in reference to warranty. So much information. Right? Troubleshooting. But you know what? I made sure I read this so you guys cannot say I did not take a look at this before I even touch this. Right? So there you go. But it's it's all important. And ooh, here it is, guys. Full CNC. Wow. And according to what I've heard, right? This has steel parts. I'm feeling like John Wick already. Oh my wow. This is this is a this feels aggressive. Like, even as, as I'm holding it right now, it's like, man, like, this feels aggressive. This hand stippling, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this hand stippling is incredible. Man, like, this is superior to pretty much any kind of stippling I've ever seen on anything. Big mag button. So the hammer feels, yeah. This hammer feels legit. That's the trigger. Oh. Yeah. Safety. Okay. It feels good. Let's rack this back. Oh my. Wow. Yeah. It looks like it needs to be cleaned a little bit, though. The, the outer barrel looks like... You can take a look at that right there. It looks a little bit dinged up. I don't. I can't tell if that's plastic or something. Uh, it's just something on there that's peeling off. If that's paint or plastic, but yeah, it needs lube. It seems dry, but for the most part, from an outer appearance perspective, very unique. It looks very sturdy. I'm not too scale like the EMG version with this half, but when you look at the, the stippling portion of it, very impressed with the stippling. And the screw, I can see the location of the screw. It's very, it's very obvious. Why is that out? Why is that screw out? Should that be in? That's weird, right? Okay. Yeah, that, that's easy to, to deal with, though. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Let's look at this magazine. So as you figure, uh, this is compatible with all the same magazines like the Sand Viper that you see on the channel. So Tokyo Marui, Army Armament, Costa, R604, all that jazz. All the army mags and Tokyo Marui mags should work. I'm not sure about armor works, so. though. And EMG. Yeah, the EMG ones should work too as well. If, if, if the army stuff works in this, the other army magazines and Tokyo Marui, the EMG mags that come with the staccato should work as well. I'm assuming. So, yeah. Cross compatibility should be across the board. Is there any gas in this magazine? It's, there's so many warnings. Oh, okay, it, it feels a little bit stiff, so I'm I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna pull that trigger. I'll put it in and pull the trigger. I don't see any warranty information in here. So in regards to a warranty, I'm assuming they're talking about an online warranty, right? 
this product should have a serial number and all this stuff that's in here. So, you know, after you read the, all these warning labels, it's like, wow, right? But yeah, rose gold barrel is pretty, it's pretty nice. The rose gold barrel is cool. Uh, blacked out rear. We have the Taran Tactical logos on the rear sight, as well as here in the lower frame. Right where you can see where the, the mag release is over on the side. You have the Taran logo here, Taran logo there, Taran logo on the right hand side with the Pit Viper. And there should also be another Taran tactical logo. Yeah, right here as well. Perfect. Interesting. And you have your nine millimeter marking right there. It's kind of interesting to see that the way that's put there in the text as nine millimeter. Ah, uh, yes, and the Taran Mart logo right there on the top. So all over, you got the Taran Tactical logo. But it feels dry, so it definitely needs some lube. So I will take it down. I will lube it. And I will do an in-depth video comparing the Sand Viper and this, which is pretty interesting because this one is full CNC. And it feels a little bit heavier. The The base plate, yeah, the, the magwell feels like it's polymer, though. The base plate, see how the base plate feels here. This feels like alloy, and this feels like polymer. So we'll do, we'll do a comparison video, for sure. Uh, the basic comparison video will be on this channel, and the in-depth comparison video, which will show the internals and all that jazz, that video is going to be up on Patreon, guys. So we'll do a basic one for all YouTube viewers. There'll be a members-only video and a Patreon video. The Patreon video will be more in-depth. We'll do internal breakdowns and things like that. So I'm looking forward to that as well. But this... This is interesting. There's so many guidelines that I've seen in that book. I don't know if that's in reference to all of Army's products or if they all come like that. Um, I, it's the first time I've ever seen that a, a book, a booklet from them like this one that's so extensive. But there might be the same warning labels in the other ones that, that I may have overlooked as well, but that's interesting. Just for the record, the Army Armament... I think it's the the R the R six O one or the R five O one or one of those the Costa basically the, the the Costa the Costa carry comp I've run that whole entire setup in rain in different conditions I ran it where else did I run it in Tenko where it was sandy I did minimal cleaning not a thorough cleaning. And it runs really fine. So, but then again, it's like, I guess when they talk about a lot of these things, what they ultimately want you to do is they want you to put the product in the best optimal environment, which is something that a lot, a lot of people, unfortunately, they don't do that. They, they abuse their items, unfortunately. And I guess in a way, the reason why they do that is just to kind of cover their end, you know, but it is what it is. Let's look at this compensator. Yeah. So this had the same single part compensator as a Sand Viper with the portion of the outer barrel that is pretty much covering. It's like, it's, it's like it covers the inner barrel so you can kind of see it from here. And the inner barrel is inside there. So, yeah. But that, that actually is the inner barrel, is it? Yeah. It's the actual inner barrel itself. It's black. So this has an all black inner barrel. So you can't really see any bronze in there. This is all black. All black inner barrel and like a rose goldish outer barrel that, as you can see there, um, it's very interesting. I don't know. Why is this screw out? That just kind of bothers me. I'm going to try and take care of that. How, is the, how does the trigger feel? Let me see. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit of take up. It's, it could be the screw. So that I will not do on camera, but we'll, I'll look at that. 
probably off camera. But this this Leo this stippling is so aggressive. It's actually hurting my hand a little bit as I'm holding it. Like wow, this is really this is really aggressive. This is very aggressive. Like this is like not gonna come out of your hand at all by any means. Now, oh, look at that. This compensator also has a thread. So guess what you can put on there? If it's anything like the Sand Viper compensator, the beautiful thing is you will be able to add a tracer or suppressor to this. So being able to run a tracer on it is going to be really cool. We'll trace it with a TLR and that will complete this setup. Yeah, this looks good, right? Can probably get a few of these magazines, maybe the the chrome dot ones, and do the whole John Wick bid. It's very neat. Are these sights adjustable on the rear? Yes, they are. What other features do we have? Yeah. So once again, like the actual realistic Tyrant Tactical John Wick Pit Viper, this has all the serrations on the rear as well and on the front. So these ports or these cuts on the front of the slide do help with efficient racking and cycling and things like that to make it a little bit faster and since this doesn't have an optic i'm expecting this to run a lot faster than the sand viper my current my sand viper with this with the sro on it it operates well but this should be faster so i'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to differentiate once we get that in action, okay? We got all the trades on there, man. The trades look really good. I'm just checking out these trades. Let's get the sticker off. Should I get this? We'll do that later. Sticker's kind of annoying. Look at the size of that mag button. Wow. That's a huge mag button. And we have that new Taran grip safety. That's not that pronounced really cool really cool guys if you have any questions about this please drop your comments in the comment section please drop your comments whatever comments you have look at that magwell everything is just pretty much meshed in yeah that's gonna make the reloads really fast as well super cool yeah tti pit viper john wick Full CNC. Ooh. What if I got the fangs on the front? Okay, I kind of do. Yeah. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for the Taran Tactical Pit Viper. Okay. Um, I will be doing a comparison video that will be on the channel once again. So be sure to check that out. We did the right thing. We read the owner's manual before operating. So no complaints there. And we did it the right way. We did it safe. As far as any other unboxing videos are concerned, we will see what will happen for the remainder of the year. Um, stay tuned. Uh, there will be a full comprehensive review on this. Hopefully no timetable on that. It will come as well as some gameplay that you will see. And I will try my best to make them as extensive as the Sand Viper and to put it through its paces. So I'm looking forward to, to doing that. So we'll see what, what this arm, armament quality has to provide for the viewers of Tactical Ashigarami TV. And of course, myself too. I really wanted to do this video and I'm very happy Whoops, that I had the... The ability to do that so yeah man this thing is super 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 impressive to me the sand viper is just one of those cool guns that i had for a while and for the all of 2023 it performed it was pretty much the sidearm for me of 2023 was the sand viper so um having this now and being able to run it hopefully in 2024 should be should be smooth you know so we'll put it in the right temperature so don't worry you know army we won't put it in the cold we won't put it 
in the extreme heat, but we will run it. And I will pretty much make it accountable. I will hold Army accountable for what they do provide. All right, guys. So once again, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that good jazz. See you guys soon, and peace.